The protagonist of this book is going to come out a new person and so will I. <laughs> Today we are just going to be doing a little chill writing update. It has been a bit of a wild year, let me just say that. <laughs> I recently uh, put out a Substack post newsletter type thing um, where I talked about how I felt about my writing journey so far and kind of reflecting on the feeling of how a lot of writers can feel like they're falling behind in some ways and a lot of that has to do with comparisons and thinking about your journey in the context of other writers who are the same age as you or younger than you. You can check out that post if you would like. I talk a lot about publishing anxiety there. Also about why I have kind of overcome that feeling a little bit this year, um, especially within the last several months as I've been working on the book that I'm currently working on. As I have worked on this book, I have really kind of come into myself as a writer and I remember having this period during when I was querying. There was a brief period of time where I really came to terms with the fact that it's totally okay. My journey is slower than another writer's and some days you feel good, some days you don't feel good. Overall, I think I've finally gotten to a place where I'm quite comfortable with myself as a writer in my skills and in how much I've developed. Writing and publishing are two different things and sometimes when you're so fixated on getting published, on finding external success, you forget that honing your writing craft is just as important if you really want to grow as a writer and I think the time that I spent over the last you know three to five years focusing a lot more on my craft even more so than the publishing side of things it's really helped me get to a point where I'm now writing stories that I feel like as good as I always hoped that I could be as a writer there was a period of time where I thought that I had plateaued in my writing skills. This was sort of like early university, end of high school. I didn't feel like I was getting better. Over the past little while, I've really just focused on trying to improve my writing from a craft perspective, at a sentence level, at a plot level. I think a lot of that time that I spent kind of buckling down and doing that, I finally feel like I'm proud of the stories that I'm writing. And that's not to say that I like wasn't proud of my writing before, but I do feel like this past couple years I've seen this tangible shift where I feel proud of my work in the moment and I didn't often have that feeling like even if you were to look at old videos from when I first started out in my channel I was like really unsure of myself and I had so many doubts about what it means to be a good writer and if I would ever get there and at the start of this year I taught myself how to separate my whole writing journey into things I can control and things that I can't control. I just live in the things I can control, which is the writing itself, and I just worry about the other stuff later. <laughs> but I am still anxious. I will always be extremely anxious when it comes to writing because this industry is just crazy. I haven't even gone through the process of going on sub. I'm not even there yet. And just the thought of being there, going on submission, having to face that final step of rejection, um, it really, really terrifies me. And I'm just trying not to think about it. I'm trying to severely distract myself. Let's start with what I'm currently reading. I feel like I don't do many book videos anymore. I am reading a bunch of stuff slash I have some books along the way. So the first book that I'm finishing up soon, hopefully, <laughs> Angels Before Man by Raphael Nicolas is a queer retelling of the fall of Satan. I am thoroughly enjoying this thematically, I guess. I've never read um, books that kind of play with the lore of the Christian Bible. I don't know, there's, there's something so otherworldly about this story. I think it's because, especially if you grow up Christian or depending on how you engage with Christianity, oftentimes like we already have like preconceived notions 
descriptions of all of the figures and all of the stories in the Bible. Um, so to see it like presented in a kind of like literary fiction way uh, is so interesting. It's kind of like a similar feeling that you would get reading um any of like madeline miller's works um but yeah really enjoying it oh the other book that i finished rereading recently was this side of paradise by f scott fitzgerald i originally read this uh a couple years ago now and i did not love it the first time i read it most people their first exposure to fitzgerald's work is gatsby and if you end up going backwards from gatsby you will definitely see how Fitzgerald's writing develops over the years. So this was his debut novel. He wrote this, I think, when he was like 23 or something, like really young. His writing is so raw in this book. <laughs> it is insane. It's such a messy story all over the place. The plot is not nearly as streamlined as it is in Gatsby. It is a coming of age story and you follow the main character of Amory Blaine across uh you know his adolescence and into adulthood I think the first time that I read it I just like wasn't prepared for how messy of a story it would be yeah I just didn't go in with the right expectations and when I decided to reread this book I breezed through it also I kind of went back and forth between reading it physically and listening to it on audiobook and I think listening to this on audiobook actually helped me a lot because I was able to stay focused in the narration more than I would be able to if I was like just reading it myself the, for the whole time. I just, I think because my expectations were much more leveled out this time, was so into it. <laughs> Like I was fully able to immerse myself a lot more into Amory as a character and how narcissistic he is and he is so much fun to read. And I think the other thing that I really enjoyed about this that I sort of didn't enjoy the first time I read it was how much the book really plays with form. There are just moments where it cuts to poetry. He inexplicably has a couple scenes in this book that are just written out like a play. Absolutely no reason. It just hard cuts and suddenly you're reading a play. <laughs> yeah, it's just bizarre, but I kind of loved it. I also was gifted um, a collection of Fitzgerald's short stories from my friend Emily. She picked this up when she was in Belgium, I believe. This has a whole bunch of his short stories, conveniently ones that I don't have. This one includes basically all the ones that I haven't read yet. These are the short stories and I just love these covers like look at the art on this it's literally so pretty um so thank you to emily for this copy i am really really liking these short stories i think so these were the short stories that he wrote between 1927 and 1931 so this was after he wrote gatsby which was not a commercial success and he was working on his last completed novel, Tender is the Night. So it was a really difficult period of time for Fitzgerald, I think, in his personal life. His personal life was kind of tumultuous and he was also struggling to write Tender is the Night, which is a book I have read and also didn't enjoy the first time I read it. So I don't know, maybe I need to reread Tender is the Night because obviously I read this out of paradise, didn't like it, reread it and loved it. So I don't know, maybe that's just like a me thing. So that's kind of what is on my reading list at the moment. Also picked up a few books that haven't arrived yet. Lynn actually recommended to me If We Were Villains by ML Rio. Um, so I'm really excited to get into that because I hear that it's quite popular and I'm kind of in the mood for that kind of book right now. Um, I also picked up Masters of Death by Olive E. Blake. And the last book that I picked up is Flux by Jinu Chong. If you have any other book recommendations, let me know. I try to keep my pulse on like what people are currently reading because I like to read stuff that is popular unless I'm like pretty sure that I'm not going to enjoy it. Like there are certain authors, writing styles, genres that I don't read that often. So I won't really go out of my way to read stuff that I know that I'm not gonna like, but 
I do think that my taste is pretty broad as far as stories go. I think what I write isn't very broad, but what I read is very broad. For the writing updates, my main update is that I'm currently working through a sizable revision for my literary cyberpunk novel, Local Heavens. The revision is sizable, let's say that. I think the foundation of the story is very much still there. Like, I don't think things are drastically changing. There are some key plot moments that I am shifting and because they are key moments there's going to be some ripple effects across other chapters. From where I am right now, I'm filming this mid-August, my goal is to get through these first round of revisions in six to eight weeks, um, which is pretty quick. And if I can't do it in those six to eight weeks, it's totally fine. That was the time period that I proposed because I have already started them. I've been working on them for the last three-ish weeks. As far as new content goes, I think it'll be equivalent of like five new chapters across the book with some other scenes, some additional scenes. I don't know, maybe this is really ambitious of me to say, but I feel quite confident about the revisions and I spoke with my agent about it and she was so excited and on board for these revisions. So I think I feel good about like where I'm at right now with Local Heavens. Like the draft is definitely in a construction phase and it's like not anywhere near perfect yet. But based on the changes that I do want to make, I am just really excited. And I think part of why I feel so confident going into this next round, I feel like I've gotten really good consistent feedback from beta readers and from my agent and their feedback very much aligns with how I want to edit the story. And I think one of my biggest fears was that going into a revision process, the changes that I wanted to make wouldn't align with what other people were telling me and I was really scared of getting conflicting feedback because I'm not great at like handling vastly conflicting feedback because I always second guess myself. Gotten feedback that is consistent. The things that people are enjoying and then the things that people think need work are pretty cleanly falling into the same places. I'm like pretty excited. Like I'm going into this revision super excited. Um, I don't think that I will have the time to extensively vlog it because I do want to try to make that sort of six to eight week deadline. I think for me, looking back, it's so surreal because this time last year, I was starting to brainstorm local heavens. <laughs> like I was, it was in its infancy roughly a year ago and I began drafting September of 2022. Right now, it being mid mid-August, I'm basically coming up on a year nurturing this story and that makes me like kind of nostalgic and emotional um, just to think about how far this draft has come. And obviously, yeah, the draft has come very far and it still has a long way to go, but I think even just the fact that it has made it this far in slightly less than a year is crazy to me. I could not have imagined myself and this project specifically being here right now. So yeah, I think I'm really thankful that for everyone who's helped me get here, all of my writer friends who have helped me get here, I just feel, yeah, it's surreal and I'm very grateful. Revisions that I actually kind of talked about this in my last vlog, getting the initial feedback from beta readers, the changes that I want to make are very much focused on um, tightening up the character arc of the protagonist. I think that his character in the first draft is, he's there, like he's a good character, but I think there's a lot of opportunity for me to strengthen him based on like beta reader. It's, it's so interesting because I never thought that I would be able to write a passive protagonist that is even a little bit interesting to read. But the trick obviously with the passive protagonist is that there still needs to be something for him to overcome. And I think solidifying the things that he does need to overcome will make this story so much better. I think the other main thing with Local Heavens in the first draft is that the way it is now, it is pretty it's on the slower side as far as pacing goes. A lot of that has to do with, I guess, how literary leaning it is in that um, 
a lot of the conflict and the tension is happening internally. So I think the external plot is quite slow in the first act. I think what is slowing the draft down at the moment is that the character just waits for things to happen to him and it's valid like that's a genuine personality trait that a person could have and he definitely is that kind of character that won't actively take initiative on things but i think with this draft what i am doing is finding that middle ground between retaining his apprehension his anxiety his shyness and balancing that with giving him the agency to make decisions on things faster. The way he is in the first draft is that he isn't really presented with a decision until close to the midpoint. Put him in a situation where he has to take action a little bit sooner. That's that for Local Heavens. Um, my plan, and obviously this could change because I am not great at making writing goals, um, my plan after the book is officially out of my hands, which will hopefully be, you know, before the end of this year, who knows though. I'm going to take the tiniest writing break because I deserve it, first of all. I just, I don't, I don't even want to write a single word of prose. I don't want to do any brainstorming. I want to live my life outside of my book. That's, that's literally gonna be on my to-do list of things to do. Um, I'm just gonna relax and calm down. After I've done that, uh, I think I'm gonna go back to The Floating House, which is my fantasy book. And that project is just so different from Local Heavens in so many different ways. It's multi-POV, whereas Local Heavens is in first person, very, very, very intimate. And The Floating House is just a lot more genre, it's a lot more commercial, it's very fast-paced, very high stakes, it's fantasy instead of sci-fi. And I think it'll just be a really nice gear shift for me to work on that. I think also with The Floating House, it's, I think it's very marketable. Like it's an adult project, but I think it has that kind of YA new adult crossover. And I think drafting it will just be, <laughs> I don't want to say easier because it's so different than Local Heavens and because the book just very, I don't know, the plot to me is very clean. I have already brainstormed it extensively and I've already written the first one, one and a half chapters because I really enjoyed writing the first chapter of the book. Like something really clicked for me when I wrote that first chapter. I'm really excited to get back into it. And the last thing that I want to do before the end of the year, submit one more short story. I think that's a very realistic goal considering that I wasn't able to submit any new short stories this year. I really want to get back into short fiction, get back into the muscle of writing short fiction because I think last summer I had really started to like get comfortable with my short fiction and then I got distracted. I started writing Local Heavens. I just kind of like forgot to keep working at it. I don't really have any ideas that I'm passionate about right now. I originally had a short story called The Fish Can't Leave and I was gonna submit that to a bunch of places but I ended up realizing that plot of it slash the world building is something that I do want to save for my next cyberpunk project. I've decided to not pursue that as a short story. Even though I liked it, I don't think the story was really coming together. So I want to write something new. I want to write something that's, you know, maybe not cyberpunk or just something that's like really tonally different than what I've done before. I think the other reason that the short story wasn't working was because it was the writing style was not falling into place. It felt like I was trying to kind of hone the voice that I used in Sway With Me, which is um, the short story that I published this year. I'm an extremely character-driven writer, so if, if the character voice isn't coming into place, then I can't write. Like, the prose just comes out sounding super weird. I need to actually be enjoying the words and not just the ideas. We're getting there with Local Heavens. We are so getting there. The protagonist of this book is going to come out a new person, and so will I. <laughs> yeah, that's all for today. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope all your writing projects are going well. I'll see you guys in my next video. Thank you.